So let's try um, another one. So we have, we want to find the 10th term of a geometric sequence where the fifth term is a2 and the sixth term is a3. So we're missing some terms, right? We don't know the first four terms, but then we know the fifth term is two and the sixth term is three. And we want to somehow find seven, eight, nine, and then we want to find that 10th term. So there's two ways to do this. Um, I'll show you both. Um, so first let's find that common ratio. Um, it's geometric, so it has a common ratio, not a common difference. So our an plus one over an. So I'm gonna use six and five because those are the only two I know. So my common ratio would be three over two. So three halves. It just means I'm multiplying by three halves. Um, so people are gonna see this a little bit differently. So I'm gonna show you how to find the formula and then you might decide the other way makes more sense. So if we wanna find the formula, we found the ratio, but we need to find A. So the formula was A n equals A times R to the n minus one. We know R is three halves. Let's see what else we can do to figure this out. So I'm gonna plug in the fifth or sixth term to figure this out. It doesn't matter which one, but these are the only two that I know. So let's just plug in the fifth term because it's smaller numbers. So we know a5 is equal to a times 3 halves to the 5 minus 1, and we know a5 is 2. So 2 equals a times 3 halves to the 4th power. So 2 equals a, and then 3 to the 4th would be 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, and then times 3 is 81. And then 2 to the 4th would be 2, 4, 8, 16. And then we'll just multiply by the reciprocal to solve for that first term. So multiply by 16 over 81, and so then A would be 32 over 81. So my formula would be 32 over 81 times 3 halves to the n minus 1. And now we can easily find the 10th term. I know it looks ugly, but we found it. So a10 would be the first term, 32 over 81, times 3 over 2 to the 10 minus 1 or 9. And we're going to leave everything as fractions, so if you use a calculator, don't do the whole thing, just do pieces. Um, I'm going to show you how to simplify without a calculator. So I noticed that 32 is 2 to the 5th, and you'll see why I'm doing this. 81 is what? 3 to the 4th? And the reason I'm doing that is that'll help me cancel out with some of these. So then it'll be times 3 to the 9th over 2 to the 9th. And the reason that's helpful is we can use power rules. So we'll get 3 to the 5th, because 9 minus 4 is 3 to the 5th on top. And then for the 2s, it's bigger on bottom, so we'll get two, 9 minus 5, or 2 to the 4th. So that's how I would simplify this without a calculator. And then 3 to the 5th, I believe, is 243, and 2 to the 4th is 16. So that would be my 10th term. Don't write it as a decimal. Leave it as a fraction. Um, we like fractions in sequences because it's easier to find patterns. Um, if you want to try this a different way, something you could do is you could multiply. You could actually just keep multiplying by 3 halves. So maybe you didn't want to find the formula. So if we know the third term is 3, then a7 is 3 halves times 3, or 9 halves. So then a8, right, you could continue the pattern. So this is kind of up to you, what maybe makes more sense to you. Maybe you thought of this, maybe you didn't. But if we can do things more than one way, that means we know it better. So then A8 would be 9 halves times 3 halves, or 27 over 4. So then A9, same idea, we'll take the previous term times 3 halves, 
So 27 fourths times 3 halves, which is 81 over 8. And then A10 again times 3 halves one more time. So we'll do 81 over 8 times 3 halves. And we should get 243 over 16. So you decide what makes more sense to you. But if we can do things both ways, then we're really understanding these and we'll be able to do more with them later. Um, but again, keep them in fraction form because that's gonna help us recognize patterns. If I wrote these all as decimals, you would never find a pattern. Um, so let's finish up with compound interest. That's also an example of a sequence. Um, so if we have an initial amount of money, we call that the principal, um, and we have an interest rate of R, and interest if interest is compounded, annually, then at the end of the first year, our interest would be P times R, and the amount is just principal plus interest. So after one year, I'll call it A1 for year one, it would be principal plus interest, which is P times R, or P times one plus R. So you'll notice it's just the previous amount times one plus R. So then A2 would be the previous amount. So our new principal is really A1, because that's what we had the year before, times 1 plus R. So that would be P times 1 plus R times 1 plus R. So A1 times 1 plus R. So we get P times 1 plus R squared. And then it creates a geometric sequence because we're multiplying by 1 plus r. So a n would be the original principal times 1 plus r to the n power. Because basically you've added interest n times every year. So let's find the amount in the account after 15 years. Um, if we deposit 400, so that'll be p, and we get 3% interest. So that means my r is 3% which will be 0 0.03, and it's compounded annually. So every year it gets compounded once. So we can find the amount after 15 years, meaning we start with 400, and the 1 plus 0 0.03 gets compounded 15 times. So that's where we get the 15 power. So we get 400 times 1.03 to the 15 power, and we can just calculate that really quickly. 623 and 19 cents after 15 years. And that's it.